Dear students, welcome to this second session. We thought we'll have a short cases for exam point of view. So we had uh, la, parotid and uh, lateral neck swelling last week. Today we have got our thyroid swellings, which are uh, one of the important things in the examination where you have short cases in the examination. So uh, we have a thyroid swelling, how to examine in the clinical settings. See, the first thing is it thyroid swelling at all. You normally examine, the patient swallows, and the thyroid also moves up and down with the thyroid trachea. We call it as thyroid swelling. There are certain thyroid swelling, trachea swellings which do not uh, belong to the thyroid category, but they are all moving with deglutition. One is a subiad bursitis, the other one is a laryngocele, the third one is a infected uh, thyroglossal cyst, and uh, some of the laryngoceles and all that. But they are all very rare in the things, so people diagnose fairly easily uh, thyroid swelling, which is moving up with deglutition. And two important things we need to ask in the examination, pressure effects and toxicity. Pressure effects, because it is, a, it is in the neck, uh, along with the vital structures, it can produce compression effect on the trachea, veins, uh, arteries, esophagus, and all that. And toxicity, we have pulse rate to be. Uh, I tell you about an interesting thing about uh, pulse rate estimation, particularly sleeping pulse rate in the examination. History. The, who is the father of thyroid diseases? Anybody? Theodor Cocker. Theodor Cocker. You mean Theodor Cocker. We will have some of his missing pictures also here. And uh, malignancy types, which you should know. And the MEN, you should know because the multiple endocrine neoplasia from apud cells will be asked in the exam. Because there are T cells in the evening uh, vivos. Because most of the oral in the evening, they, they have free time. So they ask uh, all these teachers. And uh, the replacement of thyroxine and anti-thyroid drugs and thyroid hormone synthesis, people will ask you to get ready. So the easiest method to clinically diagnose, as the patient is sitting in the couch, you examine the patient, ask her to swallow, and if it moves up with deglutition, it is a thyroid nodule. And if it is on one side of the trachea, smooth nodule, it is either an SNP or a cyst or a single nodule of a multinodular vital. Simple. You have irregularity of one nodule, it is malignancy. You can say for sure if one side has been present in irregular nodule, it is present rapid, rapidly increasing in size, present for a few months, it is CA thyroid. You have people with multiple smooth thyroid with or without toxicity, either a grave is graves under control of colloid goiters. Then you have the thyroiditis. Both sides are irregular, it is multinodular goiter per se. And both lobes are rapidly growing, it is anaplastic carcinoma. So with just one test where you palpate the position of the trachea, you will be able to come to a reasonable conclusion which you subsequently confirm with investigations. Next. See, the first one, there are three environmental factors, familial factors, and genetic factors which play. And most of the things you will find, they are all related to the food they take. The environmental Chernobyl tragedy and uh, RAS gene mutations and all that are cited for a production of anti thyroid substances which produce thyroid enlargements. And the Cocker's incision is the transverse lobe neck incision is called the Cocker's. And the person uh, is from Germany. He, he was sub supposed to have done 1,800 cases of thyroidectomy without much complications except. One or two. He was given a Nobel Prize for that. Nobel Prize was given in the year 1990. 
seven something. And this picture of here, which gave him a Nobel Prize, the child first looked normal. The child grown into a girl, adult, and you find the child continues to be the same height because she was operated for a cachexia stoma priva, that is removal of thyroid enlargement with with cachexia producing disease pattern. And you stroma, what is stroma? Anybody can answer? Stroma. Stroma is the name of a river in Bulgaria. So the cachexia occurs because there is a lot of thyroid enlargements in that place. So management of thyroid depends on three important factors. One from anatomical aspect, we need to investigate solitary nodule thyroid, MNGs and goiters. For a physiological investigations, for anatomical investigations, ultrasound, imaging CTs and radio immunosays are all that is required. For physiological physiological thyroid sweating, you have euthyroid and hyperthyroid, all that we need is T3, T4, TRX. You have pathological uh, diagnosis, benign and malignant swellings, which are by anti-thyroid antibodies, by FNAC, done. Ultrasound and FNAC are the key factors in the diagnosis of thyroid swelling. Ideal scopy is done by an ENT surgeon to know about the vocal cord function. The usefulness of thyroglossal cyst and residual thyroid are all diagnosed by I-131 imaging or a PET CT after a total thyroidectomy. Residual thyroid assay is done if it is very minimal, it can be burnt out by radia, uh, radiation X, killing dose of radioactive iodine. And when you see the pattern of thyroid cancers, with the background you examine, you'll be able to see the cases properly and come to a conclusion. You have a good, bad, and ugly. These are all the three varieties which I have classified. Papillary, which spreads by lymphatics, which is the commonest two-thirds of the incidence is from papillary carcinoma, which has got a good prognosis. Follicular, which is present as a follicular cell. Angioinvasion produces a 15% incidence and it's a bad prognotic thyroid. Mixed lymphatic, there is a combination called as Papillary variant of follicular, where it is treated as a papillary uh, tumors. Anaplastic local invasion is 8%, which has got the worst prognosis. Medullary carcinoma is 5%, which has got a bad prognosis. It may be a part of the MEN. Arthur cell is very similar to first cousin to follicular carcinoma, and the prognosis is bad, which needs always central nodal dissection. Lymphomas. Systemic presentation with nodes near the neck glands, and 2% of them are lymphomas. The pyramidal lobe of the thyroid is in the isthmus, and some people can have a tumor arising from the pyramidal lobe. When you're doing a total thyroidectomy, you need to identify the pyramidal lobe and remove it if it's present. You have, there is otherwise called as Lolote pyramid. An anatomy of the thyroid, thyreas is a shield. Struma is the name of a river. Non recurrent laryngeal. Now, when do you get it? Anybody? Non in arterial arches of the growing infant. You get development of uh, uh, the current laryngeal now from the uh, right side directly from the uh, iota, so it doesn't recur along with the favorable place like the true groove, tracheoesophageal groove. And uh, the 
take home story of a pyroblast and cyst is you manage so that it doesn't recur and send the specimen for biopsy because 2 to 3% of pyroblast and cyst can have papillary cysts which are malignant. And the best instrument investigation for papillary carcinoma is FNAC with the summum bodies, nuclear grooves, orphanannies, and all that. But follicular carcinomas are alike, both benign and malignant, so you cannot have a foolproof diagnosis with follicular carcinoma. And all the papillary variants which are described are poorer prognosis. They must be identified and treated with CAT. It is also called as autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's, which needs observation, supplementation if required, and symptomatic therapy. There is one entity which occurs in the 10 to 20 years children, which is called as dishormonogenetic goiter. And they can have a colloid goiter, which runs in families, or it can be radiation induced thyroiditis. You have scalp secondaries, which are predominant second, secondaries from follicular carcinoma. They also spread to lung and bone. And no five, FNAC is useful for primary folder, follicular. But for diagnosing secondaries in the scalp, it is useful. So when compared to other lymphomas, Hashimoto's, follicular carcinoma, certain cell, Papillary carcinoma, we enjoy, we have long years of prognosis. Total thyroidectomy has been advised for all the three thyroid enlargements I have told you. One is MNG and Graves. This is questionable, but modern um, advances mean that Graves disease and MNG, total thyroidectomy can be added. Like what you do is for carcinoma thyroid. All observed carcinoma thyroid uh, confirmed need to be operated with total thyroid. And the nodes in the pap papillary thyroid disease has got a modified radical neck dissection, which where you spare 11th cranial nerve, internal jugular vein, and sternocleidomastite. And you need to have. The entire thing should be, you need to find out the anatomy very well and then do a uh, radical neck dissection because every node that is important, every nodal uh, tissues and non nodal tissues should be identified and it's normally started from below upwards for ease, for technical convenience. And so you have a bulging uh, intangible vein as well. The main post-operative difficulty in thyroid is like what I told you last week, parotid enlargement producing facial nerve obstruction in involvement. Similarly, you have recurrent laryngeal now directly going to the larynx, which is affected in the surgical removal of thyroid. So, what are all the questions should be asked? What is the effect of calcium metabolism in the immediate post-operative period due to the removal of hypothyroid nodule, hypothyroid, hypoparathyroid nodule? So calcium metabolism, you need to know about when to take a calcium evaluation. After Normally after 24 hours it is taken. Thyroglobulin is a long-term assay for total thyroidectomy, not immediately done after surgery. Residual thyroid management is what I told you earlier, ablation with radioactive immunous material. Nodal status, nodal status is Christ's block dissection. Arthur cell carcinoma is an oncocytic variant, is a follicular variant. It is present in parotid as well. And there is pathological variety. True cut biopsies can be advised if we have a solid tumor in the, in the thyroid nodule 
and they have found out intracellular variety and various grades of spinoplastic carcinomas, which is well differentiated, poorly differentiated in intracellular variety, which is also grouped under anaplastic carcinoma. And then, of course, Graves' disease, you should know about antithyroid medication, metamizole, metamizole, and beta blockers. Primary thyroid toxicosis is eye signs. There are plenty of eye signs. There are 23 eye signs in ophthalmologist book. So you have all that is not asked in the exam because it's not necessary. Sleeping pulse rate is a very interesting story. When somebody asks in the exam, what is sleeping pulse rate? We go there, awake the patient, then the patient monitors the pulse rate and then tells you. Then uh, the idea is the patient must be sleeping and BMR must be reduced and must be low. Then only it will work. Then next. If it is. Sir, can you repeat sleeping uh, is, pulse rate? Pardon? Can you please repeat uh, about sleeping pulse rate? Sleeping pulse rate is normally an instruction given in a ward to the staff nurse to measure it at 12 o'clock in the night with patient completely sleeping. But what uh, normally that the house surgeon is saying is may awake the patient, ask this uh, go to the ask her to go to the staff nurse, measure the sleeping pulse rate and then go. So the basal metabolic rate will go up and the pulse rate, sleeping pulse rate will not be reliable. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. And if you are suspecting a medullary carcinoma by an FNAC, serum PTX levels and system LB scans must be done. System LB scans and serum PTH levels are suggestive of hyperparathyroidism due to medullary carcinoma. You have interesting things with the thyroid plunges into the thoracic cavity into the anti amidiastinum. The entire zyphi sternum is covered, so it goes posteriorly and produces compression. And then 80 to 90 percent of these multinodular goiters can be shelled out by enucleating from, from below upward with this finger dissection. There is no need for a sternotomy in most of the situations, and we'll be able to manage removal aid without sternotomy. You have a bigger of a constriction here. Just wanted to show you these nodes which are present, which form part of the modified radical neck section with complete removal of peri-arterial and peri-venous tissue, lymphatic tissue, and uh, preservation of nerves, the uh, accessory, uh, the, the vagus, recurrent laryngeal nerve. There were earlier called as functional block dissections and berry picking. Now it is not called as berry picking or functional block dissection. They are called as modified radical neck dissection. Normally, radical neck dissection is done for endoneck malignancy, which are predominantly squamous cell carcinomas. You have modified radical where you preserve the three things like the internal articular vein, accessory vein, and sternocleidomastoid. Then, uh, central dissection is added to the thyroid because they go into the chest, remove the thyroid also, uh, along with that thyroid node. Malignancy is thymus or malignant infiltration into the thymus. So, thymus is also removed. And there is an entity called as lateral aberrant thyroid, which is not seen in any of the books. It was reported in the earlier 20 to 25 years. Subsequently, lateral aberrant thyroids went away, and you don't have a diagnosis of lateral thyroid aberrant. And most of the lateral swellings are called as thyroid secondaries from papillary. Because papillary cystic degeneration can come. See, 
what is indication for surgery in multinodular goiter? A big multinodular goiter is operated. Indication for surgery is five points. You exam, you go to read, answer this question. When there is a compressive symptoms like the elevation of the hand producing Pemberton sign, cosmetic thing, you've got to be a TV anchor person with the neck, the multinodular goiter may need a surgery. Cardiothoracic. Uh, cardiac toxicity, secondary toxicity in the heart, and chest extension into the superior mediastinum, and turning into malignancy. So, if there are any suspicion of any of these three fives, five fives, uh, it is better operated. Myasthenic myoneural signs in Graves' disease. You have myasthenia gravis, dermatomyositis. Proximal muscle wasting, all that can occur along with Graves disease. Graves disease can have myasthenia gravis, means along with Graves, Graves can have myasthenia. Either way, if it is done in one, the other one occur, waxing and waning like a seesaw effect. You have myasthenia, the person becomes so weak, and you have Graves disease with tachycardia. They have a seesaw effect. They have, one is toxic, one other one is present. And intrasternal goiters produce gross obstruction, I told you. The gross obstruction is better relieved by a metal stent into the trachea to get over the, the surgery is really not advisable because most of them will have a Severe tracheal malaria at that stage, and also the compression pressure will be more malignancy. It's all decided on individual basis. After total thyroidectomy for malignancy or Graves' disease or MND, thyroglobulin is an excellent tumor marker. You might have read about that. Hemithyroidectomy. Hemithyroidectomy is done for a nodule which is. Absolutely confined to the row, row. Because when you have a hemithyroidectomy, you cannot measure thyroglobulin because thyroglobulin, if it is measured, it will show you very high levels because of the other low thyroid. Thyroglobulin is a glycoprotein, and when there is no thyroid tissue, there is no thyroglobulin. Right. Post operative complication of thyroidectomy. You have respiratory complication. When long standing multinodular goiter produces compression, once it removes the endotracheal tube, you get tracheomalacia. Tracheomalacia, where it occurs, the patient needs a tracheostomy. Recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy is going to occur in both the sides, the patient needs a tracheostomy. Superior laryngeal nerve produces superior laryngeal nerve injury in upper pole dissection. Hyperparathyroidism, I told you, it produces hypoparathyroid. Reduction, increase PTH levels. Hypothyroidism, where the patient needs a post operative thyroxine substitution. The prognostic things are decided by various grading systems AGES, AMES, prognostic factors. There are ages and AMEs. Depends predominantly on age and size of the tumor. Yes, please. Can I ask questions, please? Any questions in the audience? Sir, is there any grading system for retrosternal goiters? What? Is there any grading system for retrosternal goiters, sir? There is no grading system. As such, it is. It is. Okay, sir. For uh, multinodular goiter. Yes, sir. To plan surgery. I mean that you told that a finger dissection maximum uh, are uh, can be taken out. But no. the cases where we should do sternotomy, how to assess, sir? I made it simple so that you can take it easy. Yes, sir. The assessment of this thing should have a plans to have a lachis uh, sternotomy. Incision where middle of the sternum is removed 
and then one side and the thing is dissected out. They are not required because most okay. of the diseases, when you dissect it along the bone, it is okay. because the posterior aspect of the zipi sternum is very smooth. You can put your finger. If you go posterior to it, you will have vessels. If you dissect it from anterior bone, if you dissect it, it will be very smooth and we will be able to do it without, uh, without okay. any problems. So venous uh, tears can always be managed. Uh, they, they are confined to the thigh. Only thing is, you have a dissection. Normally, in a regular thyroidectomy, you ligate the upper pole first. But they don't do that in this thing because when you do an upper pole thigh, that becomes a little gangrene when you are going to discontinue the MNG's dissection. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Yes, please. Dr. Jacob. Any more questions? Shankar? Dr. Habib? Good afternoon. Yeah, Dr. Habib. Yeah. I uh, I'm a resident. Um, I'm from Nigeria. I just want to ask, uh, how do we manage uh, a patient with a follicular uh, neoplasm? Bear in mind that uh, the um, biopsy may not be uh, may be hard to differentiate it from follicular carcinoma and adenoma on a fine needle aspiration. How do we actually? It's a very good question because. Follicular carcinoma to be differentiated from papillary and various subdivisions are done by angioinvasion. Angioinvasion is lymphovenous channels must be preserved and it should be confined to these follicles. If you're going to go out of the capsules and you have an angioinvasion of the nodule, it is can be malignant or benign. So it is better diagnosed with. Uh, Absence of angio invasion may not really mean follicular carcinoma. So they are not diagnosed by FNAC. They need an open surgery. I mean, histopathology. Uh, See, normally thyroid, uh, last week we had all the lateral neck swellings. We have uh, thyroid enlargement because next uh, thyroid enlargements, we have quite number. We have made it very simple because fundamentals you would have read. I have not given anything about recurrent laryngeal anatomy. I have not given anything about uh, simple things of thyroid, positioning of the patient, what is the incision like and when do you remove sutures. There are a lot of things are there. You, I have just given you a aerial view of thyroid malignancies and uh, swelling to the thyroid. Yes, please. Uh, do we have to perform a prophylactic lymph node dissection in patients with follicular thyroid carcinoma? Prophylactic lymph node dissection. Prophylactic uh, lymph node dissection. In thyroids like papillary and follicular, you think twice before you do a prophylactic nodal dissection. But if it is already present, you combine with total thyroidectomy along with bilateral or bilateral uh, nodal dissection. If it is present, no prophylactic. Even Squamous cell carcinoma in the angle of the mandible in the neck level one, it is not done. L the N0 dissection is not done. There is a lot of controversy on that. But thyroid, without nodes, it is not operated. Any of the differentiated uh, we don't uh, dissect the sir? Dissection. Yes, sir. In any of the differentiated, we don't have to do the lymph node dissection. You mean that, no, sir? Any other differentiation? Any other pointers? Decide on the patient's comorbid condition will be absent and the patient must be first fit for surgery. Because if you are operating on an 80 year old person, you think twice. If it is papillary carcinoma, you can operate. Follicular carcinoma with this thing, we think twice because it can have a local invasion. It all decided on an individual basis, but the criteria is. Papillary is good prognostic, so you operate with nodes are there, you can remove that. 
there is one theory called as the metastasis do not metastasize because if we have a papillary carcinoma and metastasis in the nodes they don't metastasize elsewhere you can wait for years and years nothing will happen it doesn't go outside the lymph nodes the lymph nodes increase in size so if it is follicular it is systemic so if it is systemic i will definitely operate so follicular you can do nodal dissection can be little weighted any specific complications of doing surgery like See, thyroid as such, it acts on every cell. And when you have a mixed hematous patient, you need surgery, the indication is important. Suppose you have operating for other condition or thyroid surgery. Either way, if the other condition is uh, dependent on thyroid, you will not operate when there is no, uh, when there is hypothyroidism. But for other conditions, we can give steroids and monitor the patient depending upon the nature of the disease like emergency it can be operated or for active cases correct the tss values and then operate sandesh yes, thank you sir uh, kamar kamar ibrahim what is your question pardon the one question thank, thank you sir yeah thank you thank you dr kamar yes sir yes i'm on sir thank you sir i just wanted to ask that um, a patient with the uh, hypothyroidism sir but i'm right on the uh, anti thyroid can you hear me sir so you can sir yes sir kamar uh, a patient with Yes, sir, I'm on, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, please tell me. Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. Hey, what is the question? Yes, question. sir. Uh, a patient, a patient with hyperthyroidism, sir. That yeah. in place on that in place on thyroid. Is there still need to put the patient on thyroid and exogenous thyroid level, level thyroxine also? Maybe a low dose. I'm not able to hear you. Can you hear my question, sir? Uh, can you type in the chat chat box, Dr. Kamar? Then can you type in a question in the chat? Sorry. You put it in the group chat, Zoom. Can you type the Zoom. question? Um, okay. Maybe I should just let me let me type it, sir. Maybe you yeah, get yes. to the type. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Okay. Anybody else want to ask? See how many of the trainees are here around with uh, operating thyroid diseases per se. How many of them have operated, or how many of them have done assisted? Uh, it's uh, very difficult to take a poll, sir. This juncture. <laughs> now, yeah, Dr. Ajay Abbas. Ajay Abbas, what is the question? Oh, I was responding to the poll on how many have assisted. Uh, okay. the right. Thank you. A patient with hyperthyroidism, anti-thyroid drugs, so need to put the patient on levothyroxine. Absolutely not required when you have put it for a surgery. Hyperthyroidism, you are why you put the patient on levothyroxine? Once it's euthyroid, it is all that is required. It need not have a levothyroxine because the levothyroxine is given for uh, hypothyroidism. You need to monitor the TSH and then give it. Indications of doing anti-nodular guiter. Definitely a multinodular guiter or as irregular bilateral enlarged guiders. You have to identify them 
and if they have pain and compression tender tenderness of lobes difficulty of swallowing you straight away put the patient on anti anti thyroid antibodies and then have it checked if you have an anti thyroid antibody checked you have a thyroiditis which are one of them is my the one of them is hashimatosis the other one is like uh, radioactive thyroiditis for people living in and around the radio active centers so if they are in stations which are closer to chernobyl or anything like that they are uh, supposed to have the anti thyroid drugs anti -thyroid, anti thyroid antibodies and then assess them immediately any more questions similarly the question of thyroid development you have various enzymes you are talking about hormones we have various enzymes present they are all grouped under enzymes produce uh, thyroid development and that absence of this by genetic factors we call that as this hormonal genetic goiter and that surprising thing is the thyroid enlarges in size they don't go into hypothyroid significantly and they eat and they are of normal level sir on a fnsi if we get medullary carcinoma of thyroid then what extra investigations we should do than a normal case sir fnsi medullary carcinoma of thyroid what extra investigation the parathyroid hormone assay Okay, system, system will be scanned. Yes, sir. FNAC says there is a possibility of uh, yes, medullary carcinoma. Yes, sir. You need to do these two investigations along with imaging because it will depend on the size of the thing. If it is a smaller one, it can be done with an ultrasound scan. If it is a larger one, you need a CT scan imaging for parietic, uh, for parakarotid nodes. Thyroid okay, is usually you thyroid and uh, tsh is also done it is not going to be diagnostic yes sir uh, sir when should we do a ret ret and when should we do a pet scan the yes. indication sir very good see there are simple things like you have a hartle cell carcinoma hartle cell carcinoma is metastatic to the thing it behaves like follicular but when it yes. comes to secondary is it doesn't take radioactive iodine so technetium and radioactive iodine are not useful you have pet scan with uh, avid intake by follicular carcinoma that will give you the diagnostic for the metastasis so i think uh, pet scan is done when there is a absence of tissues like the residual thyroid which is not present because they have done maximum amount of residual thyroid okay sir see don't get tired by reading all this i signs names eponyms because it may be useful for a, a teaser yeah. exam but most of the time it may not be useful in the exam i, I think uh, my opinion is not different from radha krishnan <laughs> it's definitely not sir i totally agree with you they are very important here yeah. so there are no more uh, questions we shall close the session sir oh okay yes, oh yes. and we'll see you again next week sometime next week what topic would like to have sir actually the, uh, there's no uh, discussion till date on ulcer tongue lip ulcer mouth ulcers etc as a short case okay because it is partly covered in the you seeing excellent or uh, anything of anything the abdomen or inguinous scrotal swellings up tissue sarcoma uh, soft tissue sarcoma is fine Not, not covered till now sir yeah we can have for post graduate okay sir when when can we have uh, if you can tell me a date when we'll do it so next friday okay sir till our next friday
Thank you, Darada. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time. <laughs>